Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. It's your girl Audrey. Just kidding, that was cringe. <laughs> Today, we are going to be talking about dating to marry. So I feel like I've always been the kind of person that dates to marry back to my first real boyfriend when I was like 16 years old. Even though that was a very young relationship, I saw it as like, I was already planning our future out. We weren't even together that long, like four months, I think. I don't even remember. <laughs> One long-term relationship later and an ended engagement later, I'm still the same. I still date to marry and whenever I do meet someone that I am interested in dating, I tell them that upfront. It's not until recently that I really took into account what dating to marry really means and the importance of it. So we're gonna talk about it today. I will say that I've been pretty boy crazy my whole life, like gaga over boys, I guess. <laughs> I always became like obsessive, like, oh my gosh, they text me, <laughs> and like all of this stuff. But since my ended engagement, my heart is very guarded and I haven't let anyone back in. I haven't tried again. I used to date people and all of the obvious and apparent red flags that were literally right in front of my face, I'd push them off and I kind of just told myself that we would deal with them later. This was things like drugs, religion, how they treated me. With drugs, I thought it was just a phase and they'd grow out of it. With how they treated me, I thought over time they'd learn to treat me better if we communicated and I told them how I felt and what I did and didn't like. With religion, I thought to the point where like, we had kids, they could pick their own religion. But now that I'm very instilled in my Christian faith, it's very important to me that I have a partner that shares the same values as me so I can raise my kids to have that same Christian belief. And I guess the thing that I've learned over the years in my trial and errors of dating to marry is that the person you're dating is the person you're gonna marry. They're not gonna change. I know there are select few stories where the one person did decide to change for the benefit of the other and for themselves. But in most cases, people are selfish by nature. They're gonna do what feels good to them, regardless of how it makes you feel. So if you're dating to marry, sit down and ask yourself, what qualities do I want in my future spouse? And you should write them down. Like I said, I've trialed and erred with dating to marry, and just recently I've started to take it more seriously. Obvious and apparent red flags that were like, right in front of my face. I'm taking those more seriously now. So if I meet a guy and he has a red flag, it doesn't have to be anything against them or who they are as a person, but I know what I'm looking for in a future spouse. In the past, a candidate came along that I thought was very attractive and somehow that list of qualities I wanted in a future spouse got thrown out the window because love is blind. The more you get hurt in relationships, the more that you'll find yourself clinging to that list of spouse must-haves because you know that people will never change for you. Yes, people can change, but they have to want to change for themselves. The kind of person I was literally a year ago is not the kind of person I am now. And that's because I made a decision for myself to change. I didn't change for anybody. I literally got broken up with, and then I decided to make these changes in my life and start to take dating to marry seriously. So don't fall in love with potential. You might see someone very attractive and they smoke weed, okay? It depends like what you're looking for in a partner, if that's something you like, if it's something you don't like. Personally, I don't want a partner that smokes weed. If I meet someone and we're talking, we go out on a few dates or something, and then I figure out that they have this quality and they tell me, oh, well, I only do it here and there, but I don't do it at all. I don't want to surround myself with people that do things that are not in line with my morals and goals for myself and my life. I have very high expectations for myself now, therefore I have very high expectations for the kind of person I date and one day marry. And that's just why dating to marry comes into play and it's really important to stick to your list of spouse must-haves. Someone might come along, everything looks good on the surface, but the more that you get to know them, the more you find out about them. And that's why you date before you marry. You gotta kiss a lot of frogs to meet your husband sometimes. I mean, one of my friends, her first kiss was her husband. She was 17, they're happily married now. I mean, it happens like that sometimes, but I'm just saying, in my personal experience, I've had to kiss a few frogs, and I'll probably kiss a few more frogs. But if you have a list 
of qualities you want in a future spouse and you are dating to marry, it is very important to stick to that list because you want someone that is equally yoked with you. You want someone that's on the same page with you in the present, in the future. And maybe your pasts look different, but people can change. <laughs> It all just depends what you're looking for and you need to stay strong and stick it out for the kind of person you want because they're out there. There's literally 7 billion people. If you think there's one person that doesn't have the qualities that you want, yeah of course people are not perfect. So yeah, don't fall in love with potential. Fall in love with their character, good and bad. The more that you date someone and get to know them, you will see their flaws. You will see the areas of their life that they need to work on. But if you're the kind of person that wants to work on your own flaws and get better as a person yourself, you can help this person along the way. And they can technically be your accountability partner. And that's how you guys can have a strong foundation and a great relationship. Be picky. Take your time. This person that you are going to marry, you're going to be with forever. You don't want to pick the wrong one. <laughs> Despite what's normal in today's world, biblically, Marriage was intended for two people to stay together forever. Like I said, I'm very rooted in my Christian faith and I have a relationship with God. And so the kind of spouse I am looking for is gonna be in line with the goals and morals I have for myself as a Christian. Because one day I wanna raise a family that can follow God and live out their purpose in Him. Personally, I think the world should cancel divorce because it is so heartbreaking. People fall in love with the intention of wanting to stay together forever, or at least me. It breaks my heart to see people leave my own life that I pictured a future with. People leave other people's lives that I greatly care for and just seeing how that hurts them. As far as dating to marry goes, I would say the main thing is to just stay strong. Stick to your morals, stick to your boundaries, stick to what makes you comfortable, but also allow people to come in and challenge your beliefs and how you live your life as long as it's in a respectful way and don't settle. Because you might be looking at this list of things that you want in a future spouse, and it might seem impossible, but God literally created the world in seven days, well, six days. You think that he can't bring you someone who has the same beliefs as you, the same morals as you, the same character? Don't doubt God's greatness. He has made someone for you that is literally only intended for you. If you are rooted in your faith and you stay patient, and you trust that God is going to provide a spouse for you that is the same as you on paper, he will provide. Trust that God will provide a spouse for you. That is all of these things. Dating to marry is hard, especially in today's world where hookup culture is normalized and people cheat and it's just really disgusting what love has turned into. But if you know God, you know love. And if you are rooted in God's love, you will know how to love someone and the kind of person you're looking for will also know God's love and therefore know how to love you. If someone does not know the source of love, how can you expect them to love you? If you don't know the source of love, how can you expect to love other people? Just know that you're not alone. There's lots of people out there that date to marry. You might have kissed some really bad frogs, but that doesn't mean that you are any less worthy of the kingdom marriage that God has in store for you. Wait it out. Trust his timing, trust him, trust his plan, and everything will work out for you. Keep praying for your future spouse. They are on their way. And cling to this list of spouse must-haves. Don't settle. <laughs> That's the biggest thing. Because we don't know when our future spouse is going to show up. We don't know when God's going to bring him into our lives. I'm 22. I could be 26 before this guy enters my life. As easy as it is to sit here and make this video. That's the reality of it. I don't know how long I'm gonna be waiting. If you ever get discouraged, or you seem like the waiting is prolonged and you feel like God isn't answering your prayers, just know that his timing is perfect and come back to this video and watch it because one day it'll make sense why it never worked out with anyone else. When that day comes, you're gonna be thankful that it happened the way it did. God's plan is always better than yours. We might think we know what's best for us, but the truth is, God, he's like our dad. He's like our mom. Have our parents ever been wrong about things? Yes. But in my experience, my parents were always right when it came to relationships. Oh, I don't like him. Oh, you shouldn't be with him because he does that. Oh, he doesn't treat you good. 
oh, he's not even your same religion, what are you doing? <laughs> Obvious red flags that I talked about earlier. I look back on my past relationships sometimes and I'm like, what was I thinking? But the truth is love is blind. Sometimes we want love so badly that we toss that list of spouse must-haves out the window. And then we're like, how did we get here? You got rid of your guide. That's about all I have to say about dating to marry. It's a very big topic and I hope that I covered most of it. If you guys like this video, make sure to let me know in the comments. Subscribe and follow me on Instagram and TikTok at Aja.Blusinski. I make little snippet videos of my advice videos. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye babes.